Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. The other day I was at the bookstore and I noticed the new Guitar World magazine had Randy Rhodes on the cover. And it's a tribute to him and they had other guitar players talking about how Randy Rhodes influenced them. So I thought it'd be fun to make a video about how Randy Rhodes influenced me throughout my entire life, all the way from the very first time I heard Crazy Train. Uh, all the way till today, so let's do it. It's funny because the first time I actually heard Randy Rhodes was in my grandma's basement, my step-grandma. My uncle lived down there and he had his bedroom decked out with crazy looking posters. I remember walking in and being really scared because I was only like nine years old, I think at the time. And he had black lights and it was always filled with smoke in his room and he was always playing crazy music at a super loud volume. So as I was plugging my ears and looking around and he would play Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden and Solo Ozzy and Dio and all that kind of stuff. So even though it was scary, it was intriguing. And I remember the first time he played Crazy Train on actual vinyl. <laughs> And I had one of those DNA altering moments where my brain just kind of lit up. And back then it was kind of like the satanic panic era where everybody was afraid of heavy metal. And they accused Ozzy and bands like Twisted Sister and Judas Priest of putting backwards messages in their songs to, uh, I don't know, have their fans kill themselves or something like that. And I remember one of the singers for one of those bands were like, wouldn't that be kind of counterproductive to try to kill off our own fan base? So anyway, after hearing that album, I was already hooked and interested in it. But it wasn't until a little while later that my best friend's brother's friend started playing guitar. And I remember him playing Crazy Train and uh, I got double excited about that riff because not only now did I love the sound of the riff, but I saw somebody actually playing it on the guitar. So I guess that was another DNA altering moment where all of a sudden I linked up this awesome music with the guitar. It's just like it was planting seeds in my brain for uh, future use. It was kind of a bittersweet moment though because after he played the riff, he informed me that Randy Rhodes had already passed away. And I remember asking him how old Randy was, and he was like, I think he was in his early 20s. And I was so young at the time, I was like, oh, he's pretty old. So I couldn't stop thinking about guitar and heavy metal and Randy Rhodes and all this stuff. And eventually my best friend started playing guitar and my brother had bought a guitar around the same time. So it was like the perfect storm. So my brother would just sort of dabble on the guitar and then go play with his friends and I would pick up this guitar and I would try things. And I couldn't play Crazy Train right off the bat, but I always wanted to. And I ended up getting more interested in guitar than my brother. So he got mad at first, but then he just kind of gave up on guitar and sold it to me. And that's when I went crazy. I ended up getting the Ozzy Osbourne tribute book along with the cassette. It was through Columbia House. If you guys remember that, if you're older, you would pay like a penny and they would send you 12 cassette tapes. It was like Christmas when that box arrived. But I didn't know about a month later they would start sending me bills and I had no way of paying them. So that became a nightmare. But anyway, I still remember that the cassette was kind of this cream color compared to all my other cassettes, it looked very different. My other cassettes were either transparent looking or pure white. This one was more of like, like I said, like a cream color. So if there's a pile of cassettes, I always knew which one was Ozzy Osbourne Tribute. So I had the cassette, I had the tab book. By the way, I found it. Oops. This is the actual book. You can see it's pretty old and tattered. The back cover is gone completely. Uh, the pages are torn up and yellowed and there's a lot of writing in there because I would circle certain licks that I wanted to learn. And uh, look at how beat up this cover is. So I took all three of those things and we would go visit my dad because he moved out of our house for a while and he lived in this trailer house in a city called Mora in Minnesota. And it was always kind of boring because there's not much to do. There was a wood burning stove, there was well water. It was just like we were living in Little House in the Prairie Days or something. But I would bring my guitar, the Ozzy tab book and the cassette and I was just in heaven. What I would do is I would sneak away from the family. I claimed this room called the spider room because every time you open the door, you'd see spiders kind of scurry away. And uh, nobody wanted to be in that room. So I thought this is perfect. This will be in my isolation booth to practice. So I would sit in there with the spiders and just try to learn from the Ozzy tab book. We did not have the internet back then. I had no way of asking anybody how to do anything. So it was just me, the spiders, this book and the cassette. So I started off with the first tune, I don't know, and I would listen to it first. Then I would compare what I was hearing to the tab. And a lot of it I wasn't able to figure out because I didn't know how to do pinch harmonics at the time. <laughs> Uh, there are a few occasions where he would do the toggle switch trick like this. 
And since we didn't have the internet, like I said, I had no way to ask anybody how to do those things. So I kind of had to experiment. I just failed a bunch of times. I eventually learned how to do them, but uh, for a long time, I had no clue. It was just a big mystery. Of course, I was very excited about all the heavy stuff on that album, but one thing that surprised me was I was really intrigued by the classical solo that you find at the end of the album, which is called D. And they do some studio outtakes so you can hear Randy talking, and it's, it's really cool to be able to hear that. It's not bad. It's getting smoother now. Well, let's, can I just do two and then hear the both of them? But I was taken by the idea of playing a classical piece with fingerstyle. And like I said, I had no way to learn how to do fingerstyle, so I kind of made up my own weird way to do it. And I would just follow the tab. I didn't realize that the actual notes were connected to chords in any way. I just followed the numbers. And after a few weeks, I was able to actually play the whole thing. I played it for my dad. He was surprised that it was an Aussie tune because it was so pretty, as he said. So I owe a lot of my playing to this book in particular. Not only did I learn a ton from the tab, but I would stare at all the pictures in the book. In the middle, there's like a, a bunch of black and white pictures, I think, unless I tore them out. Oh, it's in the beginning of the book. And it really made me want to get a V-shaped guitar. So after I got done with my first guitar, which was a Les Paul knockoff, it was actually a Harmony guitar with a huge PV sticker on it. I ended up talking my mom into buying me a Charvel Avenger V and it was white. And uh, I tried to get it as close to like a Randy Rhodes type guitar that I could, but we couldn't actually afford the really nice ones. So I got the Avenger and I was happy with it for many years. So we were about in eighth grade at the time and our junior high school was having a talent show. And there was a band and they played Crazy Train. And I sat there with my friends in the audience and we watched the whole place go crazy when this band kicked into it. And uh, we all sort of lit up inside. We're like, you know, we, we gotta put a band together. We have to play the next talent show that was gonna happen the year after. So we worked really hard and we ended up playing at the next talent show and we got to experience what it was like to be on stage and have an entire gymnasium full of students and uh, friends and actually bullies that used to pick on us and girls who rejected us and teachers and everybody watching us play Metallica. It was just mind blowing for us at the time. And it was such a great feeling. I think it propelled us into really solidifying our band and going as far as we could. So when I started teaching private lessons, I was always really excited to introduce students to Randy's playing. And I would teach a lot of students uh, Crazy Train as a warm up just to get them uh, into some finger exercises that were fun to play. And I actually had a few students who already knew about Randy Rhodes. One in particular was so into Randy that she wanted to learn Diary of a Madman. And she ended up putting this uh, band together. It was kind of a temporary band. She had me playing bass. And uh, after a while, she booked a show at a venue and we went up to play. And uh, she didn't tell me that we had to take up 15 minutes. That was the, supposed to be the length of the set but we only knew that one song. So we went up there, we tried to stretch it, but we only went to about seven minutes. But that's how much she loved Randy Rhodes. She just wanted to play this song live and she did it. I'm very proud of her that she pulled it off, but it was kind of awkward walking off the stage and the sound guy's like, keep going, keep going. But we're like awkwardly walking off, but you know, it was a good experience and it's fun to look back and kind of laugh at it now. But uh, like I said, I'm proud of her for pulling it off. And if you watch my last video, it was the hair metal collaboration part three video. Uh, the second solo was played by my nephew, Jaden. He did a great job. It was really cool to include him in this collaboration. But I remember when he first started to play guitar, he was interested as well in Crazy Train. That just seems to be the riff that in inspires a lot of people to want to play guitar. And so I showed him that at a very early age and uh, to see how far he's come, I'm very proud. And if you go through all my videos on my channel, you notice I do some stuff on Randy and Ozzy. It's a bit limited though, because Ozzy's team is a little bit strict on copyright stuff. But uh, I still try, no matter what, to get some of that stuff out there. But two of my bigger videos are Randy Rhodes related. One of them is his techniques video, and the other one is the Crazy Train Anomaly video. But I talk about how when Randy recorded, he double and triple tracks uh, his solos, and I actually got a chance to talk to Max Norman, the engineer of that album, and ask him about it. And he seemed really excited that even after all these years, people are still wondering how Randy did what he did and the process of recording and all those details. So I thought that was kind of cool. So anyhow, that's my Randy story, and I want to thank Guitar World for honoring Randy this month in their newest issue, and uh, for inspiring the idea for this video too. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you at the next one. Bye-bye. Let's hear that.